Good morning. Today is a day. It's uh, looking like it's gonna be, ooh, I can do the exposure lock thing. Ready guys? Are you ready? Here we go. I'm adequately exposed, I think. Fantastic. Okay, so today is a day. It's the third, fourth, third, fourth, fourth day of the conference. Uh, and there's also tomorrow. It's Thursday. Welcome to Thursday. Hello. Greetings. Uh, first talk begins in about seven minutes, and I need to hit the road now to go attend it. I just thought of a funny tweet. I was worried about ordering Starbucks in Spanish until I realized that I've been ordering in Star Starbucks in Spanish all along. I'll probably post that to Twitter before I leave Wi-Fi, and then it is time to go walk to the all right, that's really the only update you needed. Stay tuned for more fun clips from day four of the space conference. Yay. <clears throat> okay, let's go. Ah, uh, but first, a wardrobe change was in order. Just in case I get to take a selfie with Bill Nye. Don't you think? You can tell the first plenary has already started when the entrance is just like almost completely deserted. Oh look, some cube sets. I'm on my way to get free coffee before I try to get into the plenary. Oh, thank goodness. And so it begins. The sense that bringing the samples back through return vehicle with an established track record could also go a long way towards assuaging people's fears or concerns about the safety of We have a tag team, Mr. Bill Nye, who is of course the CEO of the Planetary Society, and I think well known to most of us as Bill Nye the Science Guy, and uh, Erin Greeson, who's the Director of Communications for the Planetary Society, which is of course the world's largest non-governmental space organisation. Good morning, good morning, buenos dias. Bienvenido a todos. So I'm Bill Nye, uh, I am... Um, I'm a science educator from the United States with nothing but sunlight. Now, this is an extraordinary idea. You might think this wouldn't work because sunlight uh, has no mass, but it has momentum. It's pure energy and it has momentum. So, uh, here we go, yeah. So, I, I'm here, and uh, this is Aaron Greeson, our uh, director of communications. And what we did is we're a a nonprofit organization based in the United States. We have members, we have 52,000 members around the world. Some of you I know are members, thank you. And for members of the press who are here, uh, thank you very much for covering the Call of the Tonight Show. This is a, uh, I'm sorry, a sorry, cruise model and which travels very true. from very true. The radiation and particles that cause the sun, the wind from the sun. The wind from the sun. So this was in 1976, and it turns out that was not accurate. It, the, the solar wind, the protons that come from the sun, are very, have very little effect compared to the photons. The light is what pushes the solar cell. So uh, we, uh, we had this idea from a long time ago, and uh, we got people around the world excited about it, because uh, what's happened since Carl Sagan had this idea. We now have this business of crowdfunding. And uh, the crowdfunding is what enabled us to build the spacecraft, finish it. And we got it launched on something called the Educational Launch of Nanosatellites, ELENA, which is a program through National Aeronautics and Space Administration, through NASA in, uh, in the United States. And this was our first flight. And for those of you who supported it, thank you very much. Our next flight, is uh, we're on the manifest for the second Falcon Heavy, the SpaceX rocket with uh, 27 engines instead of nine. And uh, the first one is gonna have, my understanding, no payload, uh, no, uh, no outsider's payload, but we're on the second launch. And so for those of you who support it, thank you very much. For those of you who are members of the planetary side, thank you very much for this. And it's that romantic notion one day humans could sail through the cosmos using the pressure of sunlight. This really, it's just, to me, it's just wonderful. I took one class, and 
I got hooked on it. And when they started the Planetary Society, I joined. I'm a charter member. And now, do you guys know Neil deGrasse Tyson? Yes. yes. So he was on the board at that time. Now he's an advisor. Uh, but I went to a board meeting, and Neil is, I don't know if you know this, he's really into wine. And John Loxton, one of our board members, the world's foremost authority in the history space, and something happened at that board meeting. Now I'm the CEO. Not really, not really clear how that worked out, but it's been a fantastic adventure. And so thank you all for, for uh, joining with us. And now, the point of the story is the outreach. And Aaron Greeson, my colleague, will now talk about how uh, we were able to engage people around the world in this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> y gracias a la ciudad de Guadalajara para tu hospitalidad y tu generosidad. As Bill described, we knew that we had this great story to tell. We knew we had an opportunity to engage people around the world to be part of the solar sailing mission. This wasn't just about the Planetary Society, where our, our mission is to empower the world's citizens to advance space science and exploration. So our objective was to not only reach millions of people all around the world with a story, but get people engaged, get people involved. Uh, it's been a pleasure to participate in the Congress this week. I've been listening to lots of conversations about uh, the excitement of space science and exploration, but the, these questions, how do you get people involved? How do you reach the general public? Uh, just to add to the story, just to make things worse, and this is so often with spacecraft, there were problems. Uh, we had trouble getting in touch with it, and everybody reassured us, oh, don't worry, it'll get hit with a cosmic ray, and it'll reboot, you know, the way they do. And uh, it did, after a while. After enough orbits, enough cosmic radiation hit it, and the computer rebooted, and we were able to get in touch with it. Now, everybody, just to give you some historic perspective, uh, it's very important uh, to me, uh, Bruce Murray, one of the founders, was the head of the Jet Propulsion Lab. But before that, he worked on the Mariner spacecraft, which were based on the Ranger spacecraft, which impacted or crash landed on the moon, taking pictures all over him. And he argued strongly in the 1960s for cameras on spacecraft. This was at a time, everybody, when people thought, well, cameras are just a publicity stunt. We don't need cameras, that's, we need instruments, we need uh, radiation measurements, we need x-ray spectrometers, but they weren't gonna have cameras. Can you imagine a space program without pictures? Who would, give, who would care at all about a space program without pictures? So this spacecraft, for me, carries all this romance. It has the guy who argued for uh, cameras on spacecraft. As in the engineer who did the orbital mechanics for this other mission that was canceled really wasn't in favor of this space shuttle program. He wrote a book, Lou Friedman wrote a book in 1985 that I bought when I was working, let's see, at that time I was working at Sunstrand, which is now Honeywell, I was working on autopilots on uh, avionics. And then, uh, and then Carl Sagan, who had this romantic idea of cosmos and our place within it and so on. So all these stories came together for me and uh, 39 years later we, we flew it. But uh, there was a few hours or days of discussion. Well we want to deploy the sails. We want to make sure that the mechanism is no, 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 okay, stop, stop. We got to get a picture. And so uh, what we were able to do was get this picture, a selfie from space. And uh, it's this thing where uh, the problem was getting thumbnails down was working, but getting full resolution was difficult. So this is one more problem I'm very confident we've solved on LightSail 2, which will launch whenever SpaceX is ready for us. But we, uh, we use this time to get, I think, ironed out all the bugs. It's really, it's really an exciting time, and I, I thank you all again. So just imagine, you're a university. You're, uh, you are a small uh, organization in a developing country. You are a hobbyist with a real big idea for an application or something. Or something. These type of spacecraft could take you all kinds of places in the solar system for relatively little money. So the idea is, if you guys are the sun and I'm the sail, 
and push like this, and then if I want to move back towards you, I use the gravity of this lectern, let's say, and I turn this way. And you can tack just like a sailboat. So we're going to demonstrate some of that on light sail, too. It's very exciting. So thank you all. Uh, should we take questions? Yeah. We have a few minutes for questions. Yeah, we're right. We're right. Okay. perfect. Yeah. We have some information. And uh, the economic survey shows that uh, about 28% of Czech citizens feel informed sufficiently about developments in science and technology. And that's a horribly low number. Also, uh, uh, this figure shows the uh, paper graph uh, for elementary school or junior high school students. Hello and welcome to a large, empty conference room where I am drinking a pumpkin spice latte and my phone is blowing up because I posted pictures on Twitter and Snapchat of Bill Nye. I just took a selfie with him and we were both wearing bow ties and it turned out fantastic. And I'm really sorry I didn't get a video of it. He was on his way to the airport and it was my last possible chance to get a selfie with him and it was so totally incredibly worth it. I didn't realize that people would react this viscerally to me posting selfies of me with famous people. I could have done a lot of that this year. Kind of glad I didn't. But yeah, Bill Nye, the Bill Nye selfie with the book, it was too good to resist. It was just too good. Oh, you want to see it? Okay, here you go. Update. I'm watching the final presentation of the day before I go on an exploring mission with my Airbnb host. It's called Projection and Stability of the Orbital Debris Environment in the Light of Planned Mega Constellation Deployments. I'm not gonna lie, I only came because of the phrase Mega Constellation Deployments. Watch direction LD and on the, on the time of uh, the, or the point on orbit of Sentinel 1A during the event, which are quite unique uh, for space debris and not for natural meteorites. The impactor had a mass of 0.2 grams and came with a velocity of 11 km per second, 180 degrees apart. This shows quite nicely how interactive uh, the environment is. <coughs> now, where do we go from here?